Welcome to the Redox.com. This section is designed to help you learn a little bit about the science of redox signaling. What are these redox signaling molecules anyway? So let's go back to cells. Cells at their most basic level um, have to convert uh, food into energy or cellular energy. So looking at plants, cells, they take sunlight through the process of photosynthesis and create oxygen and their cellular energy. For animals, we take food, combine it with oxygen, and create cellular energy and carbon dioxide waste. These are basically redox signaling molecular reactions. So looking closer at our animal cells, our cells in our body, this process is the Krebs cycle. It's called oxidative phosphorylation. Basically, we're taking food, creating cell energy, it's called ATP, and a combination with producing redox signaling molecules in the process. These molecules play a critical role in our cellular health. They're very tiny, anywhere from two to four atoms in size, combinations of hydrogen, oxygen, and chloride. So they have basically two purposes in our body, these little redox signaling molecules. The first, they activate antioxidants and their ability to help our cells do the work of detoxification or dealing with the um, free radicals. So they represent a catalyst in helping antioxidants do their work. Secondly, redox signaling molecules act as messenger molecules. They direct and guide our cells in their various cellular actions, both inside and outside of cells. So all health and aging problems are directly related to a breakdown in the balance of these redox signaling molecule reactions. We call it homeostasis. When this is disturbed, we have problems that develop. So think about it. These little tiny cells contain everything that we have as bodies within them, like little microcapsules. So let's focus in a little closer on aging and illness from the perspective of redox chemistry. Aging is essentially cells not doing their designed job. They're living, but they're not doing the work that they should be. Illness, on the other hand, is really more of a dysfunction of cells, cells doing strange and different things that they shouldn't be. They're being provoked for some reason. So let's, let's take a look at some conditions. Diabetes. Here, receptor cells are becoming resistant to the directions of insulin and other redox signaling chemical reactions that are basically being ignored. The results, r r rising blood sugars and disturbances in our biology and chemistry. Hypertension. This, from a redox perspective, is basically oxidative stress that's gone unchecked. A failure to correct the buildup of wastes in our system, in essence, kind of like our arteries begin to rust. And that leads to atherosclerosis and you know, further decline in our health cancer. Here the immune system has a failure to recognize the presence of cells that are mistakenly bizarre as they've been dividing and replicating and those mistakes go unrecognized because the proper signaling wasn't accomplished and they continue to grow and lead to terrible consequences. So a new paradigm taking a little deeper look at our illnesses and aging issues essentially creates two categories. The one, oxidative stress, where you've got hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, emphysema, and inflammatory conditions or problems, where you're looking at autoimmune problems, cancer, asthma, allergy, things of that nature. So it's really more about balance. Uh, we're gonna age, but will we age in balance? This is the question. Stress is a negative experience for our cells and our, our lives. But stimulation is critical. We need the natural stimulation of life. For example, our cells, by their very nature, are driven instinctively to heal. The same way plants are instinctively drawn to move to the light, 
our cells always have a desire to move towards healing. It's in our biology and it's directed by redox chemistry. Cells also require opposition in order to fulfill their full strength. So when we exercise, we build strength. That exercise requires resistance. And as a result, we benefit. Our cells need to be near other cells. We need the community of cells and the communication that goes on between them. As one cell becomes challenged, dies off, neighboring cells will replicate and replace that cell so that the tissue can continue to function at its full potential. And our cells draw strength from the resources of prior generations. Uh, the recycling of elements and components of cells is critical as we pursue health. Just like in a forest, the broken down limbs and so forth provide resources to trees. So it's my hope that you will take time to explore our virtual office here. My wish is that you'll gain a deeper understanding of how redox signaling chemistry impacts your health, your cardiovascular health, immune system health, digestive health, our nervous system, musculoskeletal systems, skin, endocrine, and respiratory. You'll also get a chance to learn about specific illnesses and how they fit into this new category of science. And as you do, you'll see that there are references that refer to the thousands and thousands of studies that have been done over the last 10 to 15 years in this new category of health science. I would also hope that you can share this with others and direct them back here to learn more. I welcome you to this new world of redox chemistry.